Ever since I posted this first test Leviathan Terminator, I've been inundated with requests for how to paint these guys. Um, this was just kind of a scheme that I made up off the cuff, but I did record the process, so I figured I'd share that with you and show you exactly how I painted this scheme. So as you can see, I started out this model in sub-assemblies. I'm not going to show the whole unit, just one model, but um, I did paint most of the unit in one hit. The first color is model color violet. It's a very opaque, very easy to cover and easy to put through an airbrush purple. It's pretty much the base I use for any purple that I'll use that's not going to end up being, you know, like a glow or something very vibrant. This is the second layer. Um, it's sped up for 400 or so times um, because as you can see, I put through multiple, multiple very thin layers through an airbrush. This is game color Warlord purple. And then adding some white to the Warlord purple, I just do some spot highlights. As you can see, just from the shape of the model, I spray top down and that's purely because Space Marine models are mostly very easy to follow volumes, circles, cylinders, that kind of thing. Um, so it's very easy to just kind of naturally establish how light would hit the model top down um, by doing that. You can see from the bottom here, all of the bottom surfaces are still a very deep purple. I do take that a step further and I use Vallejo's Violet Ink through an airbrush and I just kind of do exactly the opposite as the light layers. I go from underneath and I kind of re-establish some of the deepest shadows. After gloss varnishing the model, I will mix up an oil wash. This is something I do for a lot of models now. It's a, my favorite way to pin wash or weather, kind of grime up any models. Um, so as you can see, I'm using Abtilin 502's oils as well as their fast dry thinner. This is the magenta, the blue green, and a little bit of black, and I mix them together just to create a deep purple. Once the model's gloss varnish, you can see just by touching the tip of the brush into an area, the capillary action allows the oils to flow into all of the recesses directly and not sit on any of the raised surfaces. The good thing about oils is once it's dry, you can still reactivate it with some of the same thinner. Um, I generally use makeup brushes or makeup sponges to clean off any excess. But after that's dried and I've applied transfers and then put a matte varnish over the model, this is uh, kind of what we're left with. This video is obviously not sponsored or anything, but I just want to take the opportunity to quickly say thank you to everyone that's followed me as I've kind of restarted YouTube, Instagram, uh, and TikTok. I'm very, very keen to keep making videos and keep making this a thing. So if you're liking the content, make sure to like the video and subscribe. If you have anything in particular that you want to see, make sure to leave that in the comments. I did film this step, however, I don't think I'm really going to incorporate it in the final scheme because I don't 100% like the way it turned out. Um, just using the same Warlord Purple on a sponge, I stippled on, I guess, some chipping. Um, it was more to just kind of blend the transfers in. Um, and this effect worked fine, but I did some over the rest of the armor that I wasn't a huge fan of. After doing that, I simply added some white... Um, I think I use some Liquitex Heavy Body Titanium White. It's a, just a very thick, opaque, white acrylic um, paint for brush painting. Um, and I added some of the Warlord Purple and started edge highlighting with this. I did a couple of passes, um, one kind of 50-50, and then I just progressively added more white and highlighted a smaller area towards the, you know, the raised brightest corners of things. After doing this, using a sponge again, I used some Games Workshop's Rhinox Hide and just applied some small chips all around the armor.
Once this was done, it was time to finally go in and do some actual brush painting. Um, just using some black, I believe this is scale 75's black, which is a very, very matte paint. I went and filled in all, pretty much everything that wasn't going to be purple. So all of the ribbing between the armor, all of the metal parts, all of the uh, little pipes that surround the legs and anything else that we could find. I then just added progressively larger amounts of white to that same black and um, did some highlights on the ribbing. This is easily my favorite metallic paint of all time, or really anything from this range. This is Vallejo's Metal Color Metallics. They're meant to go through an airbrush, but they brush on fantastically as well. So this was Exhaust Manifold. Um, it's a slightly dirty meta like silver metallic. I use it for just about the base of all of my silver metallics, and uh, it's never let me down. I did paint all of the ribs around the legs. I did end up going back and repainting them black for the final scheme because I just didn't like the silver there, but it um, still stands for the gun. I mixed some of Scale 75's Decayed Metal with Elven Gold 50-50 and base coated all the gold parts. Uh, usually I would just go in straight with Decayed Metal, but um, I wanted these to just be a little bit brighter and you know not have the highlight be as big of a big of a jump in brightness values. This is the mix that I use for all of my metallics. It's um, one to one to one, Games Workshop's Agrax Earthshade, Army Painter, the Black Dipping Wash, and Vallejo's Flow Improver. I bought one of the dipping things I don't know, four years ago, and I'm still using it to mix wash, and it's just a great way to get extra mileage uh, out of like a, a black brown wash. I stippled on some highlights. I believe I used uh, metal color aluminium on the silver, and then it's scale 75 elven gold, just straight over the over the gold. I wanted to try this stuff out as well. I recently bought some. This didn't quite work out and I figured out why, uh, but I wanted some verdigris over the metal, but I didn't get the effect that I desired and that's purely because I didn't shake the bottle enough. I didn't realize that you have to shake the bottle for minutes upon minutes to get the stuff to actually mix correctly, but um, lesson learned. I then went in with um, just a cold gray and then sli added slightly more white and did layer over layer over layer, just leaving slightly less of the base layer behind to do the, I want to say Crux Terminatus. And this is where we're at now. We're most of the way through the main body of the miniature. And um, I think it was at this point that I was trying to figure out what to do with the gauntlets. I, I thought I was going to do them the white to match the helmet, but I wanted to try something else. So I settled on doing a hazard scheme. So I sprayed over them with white ink and then a yellow ink and then just the shadows with an orange ink. And once that was done, we were kind of left with this. Then using a tape and this, the edge of a file, <laughs> I uh, just cut out some, um, I eyeballed some stripes and layered down some hazard stripes. Then sprayed some black over the top of that. As you can see, I'm doing multiple very thin layers of black. Even though black covers very easily, um, I don't want to spray too much because if I spray too much, it'll very easily bleed under the tape, especially considering this is low quality, just cheap tape. Then very, very carefully 
uh, pulling off that tape uh, to reveal our pattern. This is probably my favorite part of painting is pulling off any kind of masking. It's like unwrapping a gift, if you will, I guess. As you can see, the, the tape didn't work 100%. Uh, the edges of the black are kind of fuzzy, but I didn't really care because I knew that I would go in with a brush and just kind of chip up and blend the two areas together. So using a yellow and then a black, I just kind of feather those little joins. A dot of super glue and on goes the gauntlet. And in my opinion, that completely changes the look of it. Um, it adds a massive splash of much needed color to break up the monotony of the pretty, but you know, kind of monotonous purple. I then, I didn't really know how I wanted to do the white, but I figured I wanted to be slightly, slightly off color, not bone, not gray. So I went with Vallejo's Khaki as a base and then just added progressively more white ink to that spraying top down just like we did with the purple to leave some of those shadows behind. I then mixed up an oil wash to go with the kind of greenish base of this. So some brown, some green, and then yeah, dotted that into all of the recesses after gloss varnishing the, uh, the heads of the models. And once dry and matte varnished, that's kind of what we're left with. Much the same as the purple, just with different colors. Just went in with a quick edge highlight and then we chipped up the heads with the same brown. Once put together and base, this is what we're left with. Um, pretty simple, but effective in my opinion scheme. Um, striking on the tabletop, I've added some more units to this and I'm keen to paint some more. Hopefully get an army together and maybe actually play a game or two of 10th. But yeah, if you enjoyed this, please make sure to subscribe. I'm very keen to just keep making videos. I'm really enjoying this and it's kind of reinvigorated me in the hobby because I hadn't really painted much for a while before this. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, maybe got something useful out of it, and I will see you guys in the next one.